1. Adjusting to new changes. Take the time to acclimate to the new changes that both you and your loved one or friend will face. There are changes in the ability to write, speak, eat, and do other everyday tasks without help. Parkinson's affects the motor and non-motor skills of the body. Some of the visible motor symptoms of Parkinson's include bradykinesia which is the slowness of movement, or involuntary movement, tremors that include involuntary movement throughout the body, and rigidity where stiffness is present in the limbs. Impaired balance and an unsteady gait can also make someone with Parkinson's disease more likely to fall. Some of the non-motor challenges are insomnia, cognitive disorders that include depression and anxiety. One of the other complications is orthostatic hypotension defined as having low blood pressure when standing. This means that when the person who has Parkinson's stands up or moves too quickly they might feel dizzy or be more likely to fall. Encourage your loved one to change positions gradually, and to move slowly when they stand up these are two techniques can help with those symptoms. Problems with speech, swallowing foods, and liquids will appear. Breaking up food into smaller pieces, and using a straw for liquids will help someone with Parkinson's disease to eat and drink effectively. Dehydration can also be a problem so offering a variety of liquids can help. In addition, they may suffer from constipation, and incontinence depending on the age, and medical history of the person affected. 2. Communication is the key. Communicate. Many people with Parkinson's see different doctors and specialists who prescribe various medications and treatments. Advocate for your family member by attending doctor's appointments with them, and ask questions about treatments and medications. While medications and treatments for Parkinson's have become more advanced, there are still limitations. Some medications are not as effective as others. My grandfather lived with Parkinson's disease for 10 years, and lived in a home setting until we placed in an assisted living facility in 2013. My family and I enjoyed the time we had with him. I have experienced caring for someone with Parkinson's disease in both a home setting and an assisted living environment as well. I treasure the moments that I had with my grandfather, and wish that I would have had more time with him. Parkinson's disease has a learning curve, because of the complex nature of the disease. I found out what orthostatic hypotension was when I was trying to describe some of the symptoms my grandfather was experiencing to his general practitioner. I had watched my grandfather struggle to stand up with periods of dizziness. The symptoms began again when we were in the doctor's office. So I asked my grandfather's general practitioner to explain to me more about what orthostatic hypotension was when it came up in our conversation. I found an article about it from the internet. Fox Foundation, that I have also linked at the bottom. This is why I believe communication is an important topic when it comes to Parkinson's disease and other healthcare matters. A list of medications and any changes should also be shared with the assisted living facility or other family members as needed. When caring for someone with Parkinson's disease in a home setting, try to keep bulky furniture and clutter to a minimum. People with Parkinson's are more susceptible to falls when this environment is present. Keep pets that may move quickly away from your loved one as they are moving around the house because they can also be a falling hazard. Make sure your loved one receives their medications and meals at the proper intervals their doctors have prescribed. For safety reasons do not leave them alone when they are taking medications or eating. Assist them with showering, and using the bathroom as necessary. Consult with your healthcare provider to see what kinds of in-home health help that your loved one may qualify for. If your loved one is living in an assisted living community communicate with the staff about their care and any medical changes you see. Most of the time Parkinson's patients take their medications on 4-hour intervals. Generally most medications for Parkinson's disease are taken with meals. Make sure that your loved one is receiving their medications based on their doctor's recommendations at the facility. The most effective way to guarantee the best care is to visit often. Create a schedule of family and friends to visit in different intervals. The more you take part in the care of your loved one, the better the care they will receive. If you leave the facility make sure that you have all the medications needed while you are gone. Taking these medications on a regimented schedule will help keep Parkinson's disease manageable. 3. Self-care techniques. 
Self-care is also an important factor when you become a caregiver for someone with Parkinson's disease. Remember to take time for yourself to spend time with friends and other family members. Do not be afraid to ask from family members and friends. I found that other family members and friends legitimately wanted to help but were not sure where to start. Taking time out for yourself is okay. I know that you may feel guilty but it is important for your own mental health as well. Establish some time for yourself even if it is for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or a whole day. The whole idea is to take some time away to recuperate. Write in a journal, go to the beach, or start a new hobby, but make sure you are doing something for yourself. Create a schedule as needed with other caregivers and family members so you will be able to take a break. Join a support group for Parkinson's disease in your city or town, or on a forum online. If you want to discover the truth about Parkinson's that pharmaceutical companies hope you won't find out about, click on the link in the description. Subscribe to the channel to receive all new. Thank you for watching this video.